I think one of my favourite games of all time is Morrowind. However, I haven't finished it yet. I've started and stopped playing it numerous times. So what I intend to do today is to apply Morrowind Rebirth mod 4.8 and some other additional mods to get this game looking better and running better. Now here you can see that it says Morrowind Rebirth 4.9 Beta but I'm not going to be using that for this video. But if you want to try using it then uh, the link will be in the description. So the first step is to obviously download Morrowind. I'm using a Steam version. And let's take a look very quickly at what Rebirth does. Essentially it says it's a massive mod with a ton of new features and below you've got various sections or areas that it tackles to improve the game. And then it says it's only through gameplay that you'll have a chance to fully discover what Rebirth has to offer. So I don't think it's just a touch-up graphics overhaul. In fact, far from it, I believe it's kind of a good base to apply other mods on top of. So yes, you will have the landscape changes and different creatures and various other things like armor, weapons and clothing, but there are other recommended mods that you can apply via the Nexus website to make it look even more polished. But I think the Rebirth aims to facilitate gameplay as much as anything else, so it's not all about polishing the, uh, the graphics. So if we go to the files, I've just simply downloaded the Rebirth 4.8 and the optional files. So Rebirth 4.8 is not very big, only about 200 meg. Optional files was actually nearly as big, about 160 meg. Right, so I'm assuming you're at the same stage I'm at, which is that you've got your Steam version installed. So, right, it says here, the first thing we need to do is to apply the Morrowind code patch, which you can obtain on Nexus mods here. So let's right click and get that. Now I've already downloaded this, and all I've done simply is just a manual download. Um, I haven't bothered with the uh, uh, Nexus mod manager for this particular video. And once we've done that, it does say here you need the US UK version of the game. It also requires the expansion packs, so something like, I guess, the Game of the Year edition, which has, yeah, that comes with uh, Blood Moon and Tribunal. If you've got that version, then uh, you should be fine. I've also added the better dialogue font, which I didn't expect. You know, I nearly didn't bother with it, but I'm glad I did because it did make quite a big difference. Right, so as mentioned, let's uh, apply the uh, actual patch first. So extract the zip to your Morrowind directory, the one with the Morrowind program in it, not the data files. So it means, in my case, going to Steam, common, Morrowind. So we're going to extract it into our main Morrowind directory. If Morrowind is installed in program files, which it is, uh, you will need to run it as administrator, but it's a good habit to get into it anyway. So let's just extract. There we are, that should be good enough. And there we are, we can see that it's got the code patch there. So that's good. So I can close the, the extract window. Now when I saw this earlier on it was a bit overwhelming because there's a lot of things here that uh, you can select to install and that's just on the game mechanics alone. To be honest I'm not experienced enough with Morrowind so I w basically went for all of them. Mod specific. And you'll have to decide whether these things apply to your preferences or not. Uh, it's very hard to say for everyone what uh, you know what you're going to want to do and the bug fixes as you can see are all checked automatically so I'm not going to mess with those right patch succeeded so that is now done right so I have now applied the Morrowind code patch right the file structure when you unpack the files this applies to rebirth mod the main mod so it says copy the data files folder and paste it to one of the locations shown below. So I'm just going to copy these, paste it here. Right, 
Okay, that's now done. Uh, it says that should be it. Don't forget to tick the box Morrowind Rebirth Main. And any other EPS on ESM that you want to use in the data files. Now, I seem to recall reading somewhere that you should check all of those. Yes. So make sure you check these. So we've got everything selected there. So I've downloaded the MGE XE, which is going to add some uh, sort of graphics options for us. It says here, allows Morrowind to render distant views, scenery, shadows, high quality shaders and other features. And I did notice a difference earlier when I applied this after the rebirth. It says, if you've just installed Morrowind, run Morrowind to the title screen once to generate Morrowind's first time settings. Okay, let's do that then. Alright, and play. I'm just going to click yes here. I, this happened earlier. I didn't have any issues when I did click yes. Okay, good. That's a relief. And yeah, you've got the MCP 2.4 there. So that's the Morrowind community patch. So that's a good sign. So the first thing you should be able to notice is that you can now choose like there, I'm 1440p, so we can choose a much better resolution. Uh, it's unfortunately crashed. We did get to the title screen, so that hopefully is going to be okay. Run the new MGEXE GUI. I wonder if that's uh, going to sort the problem out. I've opened the MGEXE file with 7-zip. So we just have to extract it all to our Morrowind directory. Uh, go yes to all. And there we are, we've got the MGEXE GUI. So the first tab's graphics, so Hopefully this sorts the problem out. Alright, yep, 144 refresh. 1440p, anti-aliasing on. Now, earlier on when I just tested this, um, this was without recording, most of the time the frame rate was very good. Um, but I did see a significant drop after having used Rebirth to the, uh, the graphics extender, which is this. So. I think I might just try, because I'm recording as well now, so it's going to be even more of a hit. I might just try anti-aliasing at 4. I was using 8 earlier, and I did see frame drops as low as, I think, 38. Uh, I very rarely find that setting maximum filtering causes a frame problem. That said, I can't say I ever noticed much difference between any of the values when you look at screenshots either, but uh, you may as well enable it. Enable shaders. Shader setup. Right, HDR, eye ad adaptation, uh, I guess. Exposure reaction time. Uh, yeah, I've left that as is. SSAO, high quality. Bloom, I had as fine earlier. Not sure which one. I might try soft this time to see which one looks better. Sun shafts on. Depth of field, I've actually left on this time because I think it's a game that it could possibly work with, whereas normally I tend to turn off depth of field. Underwater sun shafts, I'm going to keep on. And interior water caustics as well. So that's that. Menu, user interface scaling, adjust the scale of Morrowind's menus and UI. The default scale is one, well I'll leave it at one. Ah, also field of view. That was something that was way too low earlier. Default is 75, it looked actually lower than that. Let's make it 
Let's try 90. Oh, it seems to go in increments of two. All right, let's try 91. Uh, fog mode sets the type of fog that Morrowind uses. Vertex range is the most accurate. Pixel depth is the most compatible. Let's try vertex best. Mip map level of detail bias. Valid range is between minus 2 and 2.0. Negative values increase detail. So let's try the best value there. So that's the graphics all sorted. Distant land. Distant land. Check this box to enable the feature. Renders landscape and objects beyond Morrowind's normal drawing distance. So we'll go yes. Uh, what about... Yeah, let's just click this. Distant land generator wizard. So we've got... Uh, Plugins here. Let's make sure this is big enough. Uh, so I guess we want to check all of them just to make sure we're covered in all, all uh, scenarios. Oh, I could have pressed uh, select all. Oh, I see. Then you click continue. Then it goes on to land textures. So, because it's an old game, we should be able to crank things up quite a bit. So, VRAM usage is only 2 megabytes, well. So, I think doubling that to 4096 shouldn't be a problem. And the same for the world normal map resolution. Check this option to reduce VRAM consumption when creating very large textures. Well, that, well maybe that I should have checked that earlier. I don't know. It may have helped with some of the hitching. Right, so now we're on to the third step, which is land meshes. Uh, I'm going to go ultra high. World mesh detail is also calculated based on the size of the world resulting from the selected plugins list. Okay, very good. So let's create land meshes. And away it goes there. Should see a green progress bar going. Takes a little bit of time. Right, that's done. And then we're on to the fourth section, which is uh, statics. Static size represents the minimum size of a mesh in in-game Morrowind units. Probably not going to alter this, because I just don't know what I'm doing. Distant texture reduction reduces the size of textures used for distant statics. At least one level of reduction is recommended as these textures require a lot of video memory. Maybe I should have left it on 1 over 2, so I'll leave it on that this time. Include relative water in interiors. Generates data for water reflection in interiors. Uh, yeah, okay. So let's do that. And I think once it's done this, it'll be finished. Right, distant land file generation complete. Total size 170 meg. Right, so finish. So that is now done on the distant land tab. We now have the in game tab. I'm just checking to make sure that I've done everything here that I need to. Ah, not quite. Blur reflections. This determines whether reflections in the water should be blurred. Uh, I guess so. Interiors. Determines whether reflections will be visible in interiors with water. Yep, check again. Dynamic ripples. Uh, yes. Caustics. Underwater refracted lighting. Um, default value is 50. I guess I'll leave that, I think. I'm not going to... Ah, use high quality exponential fog, yes. High quality uh, atmosphere and distance colouring. 
I think I did notice some improvement in colours earlier, whether it's directly related to this, I'm not exactly sure. Um, right, XE, dynamic solar shadows. Okay, I think that's about everything on that distant land tab. So we can now go to the in-game tab, which is the next one. Uh, I think I've already checked show FPS. Allow screenshots. Uh, yeah, what the hell. Not bothered about the third person camera. Dagger 4 combat controls. I've barely, if at all, played Dagger 4, so I can't comment. No, I like to have a crosshair. It says high detail actor shadows buggy, I therefore I will lead it, leave it. Uh, I've left the subtitles to be checked. So I guess that means we go on to config. Display your graphics cards maximum and yes, I think it's already done because when I selected time 16 AA, it says it wasn't supported. I think that's everything there. Instructions. I think that's. I think that's enough for now. So I can just close that. So the data files has fonts there. So we just have to. You can drag it in or just copy it in. And then I guess overwrite anything if it asks you to. So that should now be done. Stand up. Yeah, I think I will have to turn the music down because it's just a bit too loud. What's your name? Let's just choose any old name. Not even last night's storm could wake you. I heard them say we've reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. Res um, sorry, the, the field of view seems to be uh, pretty right. good here comes the guard this is where you get off come with me it's possible I could increase it further maybe 95 but um, I don't think I'll be going too much more and as you can see the FPS well it's very small actually in the top left but it says 115 110. Uh, which will now drop down when we go outside. Considerably. This is where they want you. Head down to the dock and I'll show you to the census office. Yeah, I saw it drop below 50 there. It's hitching a bit, but uh, it does look definitely much better. And we haven't even finished modding it yet. 40, I'm seeing 40. Thirty-two. <laughs> we'll finally arrive, but our records don't show from where. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office, and they'll finish your release. Yeah, I'm seeing the frames go quite high, like in the seventies and eighties, even higher. But some of the time, it drops down to. As I say, the 30s. Uh, I should have mentioned the optional files. We just need to apply some of these. But they are optional, don't have to. Uh, so, let's have a look. I've only tested one of the main menus so far. It says put textures in Morrowind stroke data files. So I went for alternative one last time. And purely for testing, I'll try. I'm um, assuming, yeah, it'll go into there. So I'm just going to copy textures and paste that into here. So textures is going into textures. Uh, that should be that. New music. I'll be interested to hear that. Read me music. Put the folder music in the Morrowind data files. Again, just dragging the or copying the relevant file into the relevant 
replacement, so music is going into music, or you can just drag it into data files and then it will go into the in the uh, correct folder. And again, I'm just going to overwrite anything. When I tried that earlier, I had no problems. New splash screens. That was the thing that confused me the most about Rebirth, was that I was expecting, upon loading Morrowind, for it to say something like Morrowind Rebirth, and it didn't. Um, but that's also partly down to my own ignor ignorance. Uh, read me. Put the folder splash. Again, splash is going into splash. So, copy. Merge. New textures. Right. Put the folder or folders if you choose textures for another retexture. Not quite sure what it means by that. Put the folder textures in Morrowind stroke data files. The bitter coast. Copy the textures. Thirteen conflicts. I hope that doesn't prove to be my downfall. Copy. Paste. So that's the splash screens and the textures, the music and the main menu. The desktop icons um, I didn't bother with. So that's the optional files taken care of, that's the main mod taken care of, that's the patch and the fonts taken care of. So let us dive into the game. This time I'm going to choose a character with a bit more care and I'll have a quick walk around, probably not much more than five minutes and then I'll come out of it and then we can take a look at some of the uh, recommended mods to apply on top of Morrowind Reaver. Well, straight away the opening screen does look different. The colour and texture looks different on the... Um, is it the Elder Scrolls symbol? I'll just go Argonian, just to keep things uh, fairly straightforward. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office. You see the depth of field there, if you look to the left of that character. Um, if I look at the post... And you, look, you try and look at the mushrooms that are just behind it. I, I think it looks alright, considering uh, normally depth of field is something that I tend to turn off. But it's early days, I'm not sure. So yeah, just with this lick of paint, it definitely looks a ton better. And now is the first time that we can actually say we're really in the game. Yeah, I can see the difference in the ground. It definitely looks better. Still quite low resolution, but it's a ton better than it was. But yeah, I remember this crippling my Voodoo 5. Uh, I didn't realise that it was dual GPU graphics card. In those days, I just didn't really understand what was inside the case. I just plugged it in, shut up the lid didn't care about the noise, <laughs> just wanted it to play games. Whereas now I'm a lot less graphics orientated compared to what I used to be. So I'm just going to walk around and have a look, look at some items and pause for a bit and maybe you can see some differences. The character shadows uh, should be visible. And the colours should look richer. Depending on your own desktop settings of course.
While I think of it, let's click on J for journal. It should look clearer. Yeah, definitely. The text doesn't look as uh, faded. It just looks sharper and richer. So it says here, and this is the first time that I'm actually looking at these mods to apply to uh, um, that work well with Rebirth. Right, so HD vanilla textures install first if possible prior to Rebirth. It's a shame actually that I didn't do this first. Um, I suppose I could try it and see how I get on and I'll just leave an annotation in the video to remind you to do this first. Yeah, what the hell, let's do that. Right, HD vanilla textures, files, three of them. Part one, part two. Optional files. I shan't bother with that one. Okay, so let's go for the manual download, part one. And also part two. I'll pop back once those are done. Shouldn't be more than another couple of minutes or so. Right, that's both the parts downloaded, so part one, let's open it with 7-zip. So, hopefully this doesn't cause any major issues. Right, close that, and as before, apply that, and overwrite anything if asked, and you will be. Right, so that's the HD textures, or vanilla textures, which is the first mod here that it mentions. And I probably won't apply many, many others, it's just going to be that one in fact, I think. Just to get an idea of the process, and to see also if it works with Rebirth, because I have applied it after, rather than prior. So I think what I'll do is once again go into the game, fingers crossed that it works, and then have a quick walk around, come out, try a gameplay mod uh, to go on top of that, and then perhaps we can actually get into some gameplay, but it's too, too big a game to... Um, really do it justice so I'll probably end up trying to get to Balmora and then call it a day. Such useless creatures. Well I did wonder whether I should create a new game because it's uh, another mod applied but I, I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but yeah it has worked because you can see the stonework looks different. But, as you can see, the game works. It seems to run. Fingers crossed. Yes, sir. And it's often the case when you read about modding the Elder Scrolls games, people spend more time modding them than they do actually playing them, but... I, I do want to get to the stage where I'm going to be playing it right to the end, because uh, it's it's too good to pass up on. Yeah, I'd say the sky looks a bit different, I think. Uh, contrast and brightness look a bit different. There's probably lots of subtle changes that I'm not really aware of. So let's apply a gameplay mod now and then uh, get back into the game and make our way to Balmora okay so that's the the graphics or the recommended uh, graphics mods, mods just vaguely touched on there's loads here that it recommends so you'll have to run through tests and try them out and see which ones you like or dislike and finally, we have the recommended mods for gameplay, so let's have a quick look at some of these. Ah, there is one here. It's a very subtle one, but it's something that I can identify with. It says lower first-person sneak mode. 
That's something that I've always thought was a bit uh, lacking. So let's. It says makes it easier to tell whether you are in a sneak mode or not. So let's check this one out. Just the one file. Again, manual download for me. Open up the zip, and the README says add the ESP to Morrowind data files and activate. Right, okay, so I'm assuming it's just a case of going into the data files, copying that, pasting that in, and then when I go to the launcher, do I click on data files? Yeah, and then we see the at the bottom there it says lower first person sneak so just double click on it make sure it's checked click OK and so that's now ready to to play and away we go so yeah so if I press back my uh, sneak key then yes friend you should notice that uh, it's more apparent that I'm actually, you know, uh, in a lower position. I think the original, it's only very slight. Uh, I think this person's just got uh, spells. Oh no. Iron Longsword. Iron Claymore. That's... What's the damage? 8 to 24 slash 4 to 22. Yeah, what the hell. Let's get the Claymore. I assume I can use it. I don't actually know. <laughs> Only one way to find out. Oh, he wants 96 for it. Uh, I think the Claymore's going to have to uh, be forgotten for now. Yeah, let's take... Whoops. Let's take the, uh, the long sword. That'll do. Okay. One thing I hear regularly about Morrowind is people don't like the combat system in it, but it, it never bothered me. Uh, I've never really minded. For some reason, I don't know why. Right, let's see if I can make it to Balmora. It's been so long. I think it's been about five, four or five years since I've played this, so... Really can't remember much about it at all. It's interesting if you look at the uh, examine the the tree roots hanging down or whatever they call the the branches, and then you can see the depth of field effect ahead. Actually, looks quite nice. I don't mind that. Skeleton. Iron dagger. Glass bottle. I've just sold one of those. And some gold pieces. You can even jump on the mushrooms. That looks like a mud crab.
Luminous Risala. Just interested to see whether or not the you know how quickly they uh I'm attacked. How persistent the enemies are. Is there a time of day that we can check? Does it tell us what time of day it is? Not sure. Probably in my journal, wouldn't it? Hmm. Oh, those things. Are they? Is that a Nyx hound there? Bit of a nightmare, as I remember rightly. Yeah, I remember looking at the water on the MSGO mod. It looks so beautiful, so tranquil. And I can't really think of any other game that I've played which is as truly open world as this. I mean, if you've got the Levitate spell, you can just go up and up. I can't think of any other game. I mean, Stalker's not uh, really open world. It's only semi-open world. Is there something in there that I can... I don't think so. Yeah, that's the Nyx Hound. Those things are a nightmare, as I remember. Especially when you get several of them. You can hear the, uh... Oh, what? Yeah, I'd rather you just uh, left me alone. Uh, did he fire a bow at me or something? No, he's actually chasing after me. I think I'm going to die here. Yeah. Bugger. I suppose I should pick on some creatures to get some uh, get my stats up, but it's going to be not enough, I don't think. That's a Kwama Forager. Quite plucky little things. You can see the detail though. I think the noise of this thing, these don't hurt you, I don't think. Oh wait, they do. I didn't think they did attack you. Interesting. I don't recall ever being attacked by those before. And you can see the changes there in the gameplay is that it um, breaks into parts, whereas before it didn't, I don't think. I don't remember it anyway. <laughs> you see that, the way he scooted away. game well saved. Hopefully I'll avoid any uh, more uh, contact with that that humanoid or whatever it was. An elf, I think.
Oh, there's two of them. Mud crabs take all. Yeah, it looks to be a bit more polish on those. Crab meat. Aren't uh, Argonians supposed to be quite good at swimming? Oh, look at that. Small slaughterfish. That looks familiar. I can't quite remember what it's called. Is it uh, Vivek? crossing over here. Another mud crab coming up. Oh, it's a mud crab. I was just about to say, is that a mud crab? For a second, I didn't think it was. Then I thought, oh, it is. So I'm sure there's many more mods that you can apply to the uh, yeah, the base, which is Rebirth, but um, even just the steps I've taken in this video, it should demonstrate that it's a hell of an improvement on the, on the original, so, you know, you don't have to spend hours modding to make it look much improved. Right, there's a signpost over here. I seem to recall these things are... They're not hostile, is that right? Yeah, Vivek. Balmora's this way then. It's been so long, I just don't really know what I'm doing. I think I last played it four or five years ago. God, the skies are so rich and colourful.
Oh, he's still alive. Aha, your long blade skill increased to 21. Uh, I hope you're not the hostile one that attacked me earlier. He came to help me. I thought he was. <laughs> Gonna hurt me. Imperial Guard. Yes, friend. Yeah, I thought you might be a, a less. But even uh, just with the basic additions, it definitely looks a lot better. things. I think they're even worse than the uh is it the Nyx hounds? It's like to think I've gone round in a circle. Not long ago. No, maybe not. Don't really wish to get too engaged in conversation with anyone. Just want to get to Balmora, meet who I'm supposed to meet, and have a quick scout round. And I think that'll make for a long enough video. Planets in the sky. So it's this direction. I vaguely recall a female being there. Is it saying she's lost or something? Can't remember. I don't think I can be too far off Balmora now. Uh, right, it's not going to be left, is it? It might be to the right. Oh no, it is in this direction. Oh, it definitely injured me there. No, it didn't. I think it means I injured it.
Yeah, some items, some objects do show considerably um, greater detail. Some still need plenty of work, but it's definitely a big improvement. I think I've said that enough now. Ah, uh, cliff racer up there. I remember those only too well. Uh, yeah, I think we got to go over those steps there. Yeah. Yeah, down to 31 frames then at one point. Twenty two frames, my God. So, I mean, without recording, it would probably be no lower than about thirty five to forty, but um, it's certainly lower than I expected. Is that shut because it's night time? Yeah, I think the rebirth, this is where it makes the, the differences in the landscape. So, this is completely new ground for me. I think I need to avoid those, uh, those aggressive fish. I guess if I somehow get in there illegally, I'm going to be arrested. Oh, 18 frames a second. Alright, let's go and meet our friend. I think he is on the other side. I'm not sure how you say that. Is it Halalu Guard? But I quite like the... Uh, or part of the uh, attire that he's wearing. I've gone to the wrong building. Yeah, I think I am in the wrong... Hmm, I thought it was in the corner somewhere. Ah, maybe it's this one. Yeah. Right, so report to Chaos Cossades. Right, delivering a package. Perhaps you will let me look at the package. Yes. I'm ready to follow orders. And this is really where the main quest begins. So, 
So I think, as you can see, with relatively modest efforts, really, you can get the game looking much better. Although performance is something I'm still concerned about, but uh, overall it seems to be, for a game of this type, not going to be a serious problem. Not like you're playing a fast-paced first-person shooter. And for the most part, the performance seems to be pretty fair. I can't grumble too much, although it is lower than I was expecting. So all the files that you'll require will be in the video description as per usual. And that just leaves me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, then please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video, which will most likely be Stalker Part 18. Bye for now. You in war. You in war. Die again.